Hey everybody, Janine Truitt here as Serena. Thank you for joining me once again. Happy Thursday, happy National Wine Day. I believe that's what it is, National Wine Day. I am kind of bummed that I didn't get to partake in this festive occasion because I do love me a glass of wine. But duty called and I just never had a moment to enjoy. Um, and actually, I don't even have wine in the house right now. I've got like sake, rum, rum chata, and fireball. So like I think at one point I figured if I got all my work done, I would have just like poured a little bit of rum chata and a little bit of fireball in a wine glass and kind of made it into my own kind of wine drinking experience don't ask so well in any event happy national wine drinking day and again thank you for tuning in i am here once again to discuss a little bit of behind the scenes for this week's blog on the aristocracy of hr.com so this week's blog is called the untouchables why you should not be salvaging bad employees at any level basically um and this is a topic much like many of the others um but it's it's a topic that i've lived like over and over again almost like a nightmare in a sense because it's this whole idea and concept that um, no matter how good you are at something or how bad you are, rather, even that end of the extreme, that somehow you are untouchable. You cannot be touched. You cannot be fired. Um, no harm comes to you. Your job is never in jeopardy. Um, because you have somehow been encapsulated um, in, you know, some sort of aura of goodness, um, usually by leadership. And so, you know, nothing ever happens, but it happens to a lot of other people. And I guess that's the problem with it. So this idea of the untouchable is something, like I said, I've experienced quite a bit. Um, it sticks in my craw, guys. I have to like kind of share that. It really, really sticks in my craw. I am somebody that really, really believes in rewarding performance. Re more specifically, rewarding good performance or great performance. I don't believe that, you know, because you try or because you have asked something that you get a certificate or you get a goodie bag just because. Um, I'm just not that believer. I believe that when you put the work in and you work hard and you really show up every day with the best of intentions to do the right thing, I feel like if it can be rewarded, if that behavior can be rewarded, then I feel like it should be rewarded. And there are companies that are really good at making sure that their employees are um, recognized for their efforts. And then I would say there's an even larger percentage of companies that still don't get it. And whether it's intentional or unintentional, the important thing for every employer to know is that it's damaging. And so half of your battle as an employer is really to recognize that it's even going on or to be looking for instances in which it may be going on even if you don't see it with the naked eye and fix it fix it immediately. So here's the backstory. Once upon a time, I worked with an employee, coworker, who could do no wrong. 
not only could he do no wrong, but his manager, my then manager, could do no wrong. And I mean, there's just such a lengthy list of the things that this person did, but here goes. So on a weekly basis, this person would be absent two, sometimes three times a week. Now, I'm all for if you're sick, please don't come to work and infect the rest of us. I'm fine with it. But once it was that his tummy hurt, his tummy, a grown ass man, his tummy. So, you know, he, it wasn't just so much that he was taking off, maybe, perhaps, let's be politically correct, perhaps there was some sort of chronic illness that none of us knew about, maybe. Um, the interesting thing about it is that it got out, it leaked, as many things do in an office, that he was not being charged for his days his, that is his sick days or vacation days in the same manner that the rest of us were being nickel and dimed for our time. So that is if I took off, sick for me, sick for my kids, vacation, whatever, my time was taken accordingly. In his case, time never seemed to go away. He just had unlimited vacation, unlimited sick, and judging by as many times as he was out, he should have had much of nothing. So there was that. He was not the greatest worker. So while his intentions may have been well, I think he understood that he had the backing of my then boss. And so he just did whatever he wanted to do. You know, he'd get in meetings, he'd be rude. He was rude behind the scenes. Um, people would complain to her about him and nothing was ever done. It was always, well, you know, maybe he meant it this way. There was always an excuse, um, except really early on in my career with this company, when people didn't feel as though I was being social enough, the same gentleman had the audacity to go to her and say that I wasn't exactly working out because I wasn't being social. And by being social, he meant I didn't want to take his stupid little Jersey Shore name, and so he wasn't too pleased. Um, but that said, as a new employee, I was brought in and asked if I can somehow be more social, more jovial, more, um, you know, accepting of the way that they chose to be as colleagues, these two that I was dealing with. Um, so, you know, not to get too deep in this story, but there are double standards very often in office environments. And like I said, I cannot sit here a hundred percent and say every single leader, every manager intentionally means to create these situations where they have a person or a bunch of people who are like the golden children, the untouchables of the organization, but that's what ends up happening. So it, I, I gather that it ends up happening because there's synergies. So, you know, they come to like the person on a personal level, the person become, comes to like them, you know, they have similarities, there's friendships that are built and one is almost always in a position where they're able to um, create a leveraged um, situation for that staff member and so you know there's the brown nosing aspect but in return for whatever it is either in return for overachievement or underachievement or just simple brown nosing these people are toxic they drain your organization's um, life's blood they are seen as an affront to most people who come every day and who, you know, despite 
them not wanting to be maybe overly social like I was or maybe being more focused on outcomes and results um, get their work done. They work hard. They work painfully hard as I suggest in the article and yet they often are the ones that don't see the recognition or accolades in return for their efforts. Um, and so when we talk about things like engagement um, and things like that, these are the things that suck engagement. These are the things that cause people to leave. Aside from your boss being just a vile character, so like we've had enough of those stories in terms of just bad leaders, but you know, what about the leader that just has this whole sentiment of favoritism and doesn't see that that favoritism is damaging and doesn't see how that adversely impacts others? That is just as damaging. And I would um, even wager that more so than, you know, the vile character leaders that this right here, the politics, the politicking, is really um, what drives people crazy in the workforce and what is the quickest way to get somebody from really loving their job and coming every day and putting in like 150% effort and then feeling like, what the hell? Like, why do I even bother? And, and then you see that productivity just kind of dip um, because what ends up happening is you just keep seeing the same people moving up, moving up, moving up all the time. And you know what you're doing and you know what they're doing. And so you start to question what success looks like in that organization. And, you know, when you recognize that success in that organization is not predicated on your efforts, that is doing your work whether that's at a meet standards level or even above standards level, when that doesn't garner you the sort of successes that it should, you say to yourself, what is the point? And so some people will duke it out. They will stand unwavered but pissed off and get the work done. A lot more others will probably be pissed off and start looking for work in time because Again, it's almost like a personal affront to that person and their career. Um, and, you know, there's just but so much of that scenario and that kind of political, almost political situation that one can deal with. So that is kind of the mindset behind the article. Um, I am just so happy that I'm verified in what I've experienced and that it's not just me because just so many people have been reaching out and saying love 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 the article or thank you so much or do you know my boss so apparently this epidemic is a little bit more prevalent than anybody wants to admit but it is what it is and if you're watching this as an employer I highly 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 suggest that if you know this is going on stop it now stop it now if somebody is poor bad employee get rid of them stop hoarding trash like literally stop hoarding trash let them move on to somewhere else I don't give a crap if they are a key employee I hear that a lot oh well they're key they're a key employee well how key is it if that one person is so so great that they're sitting where they're sitting and meanwhile their presence is causing you to leave you know tens to you know upwards of maybe even hundreds of other employees because of their presence and because of what they bring to the organization so I talk about in the article about how it's a contamination to the ecosystem and it really and truly is there's just nothing good that can come of it. Mixing a lot of bad with a bunch of good, at some point the bad starts to suck the good dry. And so you have to be mindful of it. And I think even if you don't think it's happening, it's important for you to 
you know, do some periodic sleuth work and, and kind of check if it is going on. Um, if it's not, great. But if you find it, you've got to nip it in the bud and you've got to be willing to, you know, lose somebody who, yes, may be good for some things. Um, but ultimately, if they're not contributing really in totality to the greater good, you have to question whether they're the right fit for your organization. So that's pretty much the background on it. And... I hope you enjoy the article. I'm always interested in your comments and your feedback on it. So definitely head over to the aristocracyofhr.com and check that out. And as normal, I will see you back here next week with another topic. And I hope you have a great rest of the week and a great weekend. Take care.